Hello and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I'm in the process of documenting building my very first plastic model kit, a 1968 Volkswagen Beetle. We're finally ready to add some color to this little guy and I could not be more excited. The blue color I've chosen is close to the box art but it's just a little bit darker which I thought was a more pleasing color. Getting to this point took some time and a bit of effort. After building the spray booth, I spent several hours practicing using an airbrush. Beyond researching airbrushes in general, I also studied the history of and how they evolved, which was very interesting. In particular, I found Paul Budzik over at Scale Model Workshop to be a great resource, and I'll put a link to his series down in the description. I have to say though, I'm not a complete novice coming into this. I do have a working knowledge of how an airbrush works from my grandfather who taught me how to use and maintain a spray gun for restoring old cars. While I found the techniques similar, they weren't exactly a one-to-one -one match, so it did take a little time to become comfortable enough to decide to actually put paint on the model itself. Once the first coat was done and after a little bit of final sanding with some 1000 grit sandpaper and fixing a scratch mark I put on the side trying to enhance the panel lines on the door, I laid down a second coat of blue paint and then set that aside to dry before clear coating it. I thought I did a decent job fixing the scratch, but we'll see how it goes when we do the clear coat. Moving on, pulling the masking tape off to see how well the paint went down is always a fun part. It's doing okay, but I see a few places I'll need to touch up, but overall I'm pleased with the outcome. That said though, next time I might do things a bit differently. Instead of starting with a mask, I would start with the light colors and then mask those off before moving on to the darker colors. My theory being is that the darker colors shouldn't have any problem covering any overspray from the lighter ones. I think that would only work though with flat paint where you're going to be clear coating everything afterwards. The masking tape I'm using is just standard hardware store painters tape. The paper's not very thick like the 3M blue masking tape, but when you cut it into thin strips, it works really well for tight spots. And so far, I've not had any paint bleed under the edges, although I've not been putting a lot of heavy stuff on it so far. I do have some of the 3M automotive masking tape, the green stuff that I'll be trying out in the future, but just this generic stuff is working pretty well so far. As long as you're burnishing your edges like you would any masking tape in order to get good, crisp, clean lines. Moving on to the interior, door panels, front and back seats will be white, so once I have the door panels masked up again, we'll get out the airbrush and finish up those.
Building and documenting this model kit has been a lot of fun, and I've definitely got the bug and can't wait to build more kits in the future. In fact, I've already collected about eight different kits that I'd like to build, and I'm actively looking for more. If you like what you're seeing so far, I'd really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and, cons and consider subscribing. There will be more videos coming and it really does help the YouTube algorithm present my content to other like-minded viewers that would enjoy it as well. So far, YouTube's been a huge influence for me, and Adam Savage's Tested in particular. In fact, I was a fan of both Tested and Adam before he became part of the Tested team. And since then, we're definitely looking at a case of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. Adam's passion for model making has definitely been a huge influence, of which he's made a career out of for many years, and, and I guess he still does since they cover a lot of tools and techniques used in modeling industry. Tell you what, I'm going to create a playlist of some of my favorite tested episodes about modeling and I'll put that down in the description when the video goes live. I set those aside to dry while I went and gave the airbrush a thorough cleaning. Once they were dry, I unmasked the door panels for a second time and I'm seeing a few places I'll need to touch up, but overall I'm pleased with my first outing airbrushing a plastic model kit.
Here I'm using Rust-Oleum 2X clear gloss in the rattle can I picked up at the hardware store to clear coat the bonnet, engine cover, and body. I did end up with a little too much on the bonnet and it started to run, but I think I caught the worst of it by rotating it around so that it didn't beat up into a big drip. Once it had fully dried, it wasn't as noticeable as I feared, but I still knew it was there and was a bit peeved about that. And that was another lesson learned, or I should say relearned. Less is more when you're spraying paint. Start with light coats and let it dry in between so you don't end up with a tsunami of paint running down your part. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you getting all the way to the end of the video. I think we're about done with this series. We should be able to finish it up with about two more videos and we'll be moving on to the A10 Warthog after that. If you're new to the series, the playlist is on the left, the next video is on the right. Thanks again, stay well.